Thomasville was the exception. For most Georgians, the aftermath of the Civil War meant poverty, hunger, chaos. It was a struggle to simply survive. But there were those who looked to the future and saw opportunity. Take the Brumby family of Marietta. They created a rocking chair that is still popular today. It was a world that Margaret Mitchell uh, uh, characterized as one gone with the wind. It was not the same world that he had left behind. Smell them Yankees yet? The Confederate soldier who returned home after the Civil War would find he was trading one battle for another. The South and its economy had been devastated by four long years of bloody fighting. Many of its people would have great difficulty just getting enough to eat, enough to survive. It was an experience in which uh, you weren't sure where your next meal was coming from. Phil Seacrest is a collector of Civil War relics. During the war, Kennesaw Mountain and the Marietta area where he lives were the scenes of raging battles. Soldiers were often buried where they fell. After the war, contractors were hired to collect the remains for proper burial. They were paid well, $25 per body, but they didn't always get all the parts. Using what they required was a skull, and then maybe a few bones, and they wouldn't go to a lot of trouble to collect all the bones on the site, just the skull and a few long bones. And so there were literally, and still are, um, remains, portions of remains, on the battlefields of the South, uh, odds and ends of, of bones from legs and arms and so forth. Confederate money was now worthless, so were stocks and bonds, often the bulk of one's life savings. So folks near Kennesaw Mountain turned to the battlefields for one of the only ways to raise cash. I'm not sure you can see this in my hand, but this is lead and it was one of more than 20 million bullets used during the war. They were scattered over the fields, and the people needing cash learned that they could pick these bullets up and put them in buckets and take it to the nearest hardware store and sell their bullets by the pound. And they usually got about a penny a pound. One returning Confederate soldier, James Remley Brumby, dreamed of owning his own business he began manufacturing flour barrels in Marietta shortly after the war. But when the textile industry moved south, companies started using flour sacks instead. So Brumby, with the help of his brother Thomas, switched from making wooden flour barrels to making wooden chairs. And not just any chairs. Their signature Brumby Rocker may be the oldest manufactured Georgia product still being made today. So comfortable. I mean, if they sit in other rockers and then they come here and sit in the Brumby, they, they know the difference <laughs> as soon as they sit in a Brumby. The Brumby Chair Company became Marietta's biggest employer, providing badly needed manufacturing jobs. But there were setbacks. In 1878, sparks from a passing train burned down their brand new factory, and it had to be rebuilt. Well, they were obviously very determined, very hardy people, but I think you know, most people that day had to be. I mean, you know, those were difficult times. This area was devastated by the Civil War. Uh, this economy here was uh, totally in a state of collapse. Uh, you know, there, there were very few, if any, manufacturing jobs uh, in this part of the country then. So I guess their options were either to uh, build back the factory and continue to make chairs and build that business or, or go into farming. Today, the Brumby Rocker comes in sizes to please even Goldilocks. A papa chair, a mama chair, and a baby bear. I mean chair. The jumbo Brumby Rocker once sold for $3 a piece. That same rocking chair today goes for $719. It is still made the same way it was 120 years ago, mostly by hand to the same precise standards. It means they're going to get something that's going to last them a lifetime. <laughs> that's, that's basically what it means. Let me tell you what makes the Brumby Rocker so comfortable, and I think why it's still around 120 years later. The back posts are steam bent. They have about a two or three degree bend in them. If you look down the back post like you would a gun barrel, you know it's crooked, and that's by design, and that helps makes it more comfortable. I have a lot of people that have gotten rockers from their grandparents that are redoing their old Brumbies, and they tell me a lot about about rocking in them when they were little and their 
parents rocking them, their grandparents rocking them. The memories that it brings back may be the real secret to the Brumby Rockers' continuing appeal. And maybe it's a reminder to all of us that there can be success stories even out of the ashes of war. As Charles Dickens said, it was the best of times. It was, it was the worst of times. And certainly it was a renewal. It was a time when you know you could you could could hope for a better life. Um, but it was still a very hard time, a very harsh and brutal time for people to try to just simply survive. Brumby Rockers are a favorite of former President Jimmy Carter, who brought several of them to the White House. About Georgia's economic history, there are more stories to tell, so we'll be back. This is Georgia Stories 2. I'm Colin Sedor. Thanks.